Brothers and sisters, today in the gospel, we see a scene in the life of Jesus that always touches my heart in a really profound way. And it's the way that Jesus' compassion stirs his heart and he's attracted to this widow who's mourning for her son, uh, the widow of Nain, and he raises the son to life. First of all, just to stop and have this awe and wonder, the power that Jesus has, the power that leads us to, to make a faith make an act of faith in his divinity to raise someone to life. So we have to really stop in these moments of the gospel, not just to think of it just, you know, as like one of Jesus's life stories, but this actually happened. This is history. This is the testimony of the incredible person of Jesus Christ. But in this, this story, we see something really profound that this woman didn't even ask Jesus to heal her son, but Jesus was just completely and utterly attracted to her heart, to her suffering, and he bestowed on her this wonderful gift. How many times in our life has Jesus given us so many incredible gifts and we may not have stopped to thank him or we're not even aware that his eyes have been on us, that he has been attracted so much to our hearts. And I often think this passage just shows us that you know, when we are just living with just true faith and sincerity and trying to follow the Lord with all our hearts, how much does that not attract the eyes of the Lord upon our life? But even the gospel tells us that even those people, even ourselves at times where we're not merciful, we're not kind, God's still kind to us. He still gives us graces and blessings. Jesus says, my father is like the sun that shines on the good and bad alike. He's kind to the unkind and the kind. In other words, God gives gifts even to those who may not even always be faithful but far more for those who are faithful in the sense that the lord is kind and generous too in a special way to to his faithful he bestows on them uh you know the amazing gift that of working all things towards god as saint paul says all those who love god god works all things for the good and so i have this great mystery of this this the scene in the life of Christ, of Christ attracted to this widow's heart. And of course, it stirs our hearts may, maybe to contemplate, you know, when in this moment, Jesus might be even had this foresight or in this event of what would even happen to him. And he would see this widow mourning and see something of the mystery of his own mother, who would be a widow at the foot of the cross. We could forget Our Lady is a widow at the foot of the cross. And this is what I really want to speak about in today's video about a very powerful vocation, maybe an unsuspected vocation, or sometimes we don't speak enough about it, or even in the sense of it as a vocation, but the call to widowhood or widowerhood. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an ancient office in the life of the church, consecrated widows. We have consecrated virgins, uh, people who, women who've decided to, to live a single life under a bishop, but they live in their homes or they serve the church and they've chosen to live uh, a, a particularly dedicated life of prayer and service to the church and making a vow of chastity for the rest of their lives. The same thing with a, a widow. A widow, there is such a thing. I know someone actually who is very dear to my heart and who is a consecrated widow who decided after her husband had passed away to, to, to eventually commit her life to the church in, in a more canonical way, you could say, in a, or consecrating herself to a bishop. Uh, to well to God through a bishop to serve the church and to pray and to to um to to promise chastity for the rest of her life and so so this is a really beautiful vocation that we we sometimes don't realize that when God takes somebody's spouse or calls us a spouse home he has is inviting that 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 woman or that man into a profound profound state of prayer uh, into a call. And, you know, we see widows throughout the scriptures and we see in their lives um, that often the, Jesus has a special love for widows. He, he, he sees in them, he, he uses them in many ways, like, for example, today's, today's story about the widow of Nain and her son, but also the, wom the widow in the temple. She puts everything into the treasure and attracts the eyes of Christ. We think of his mother, the widow at the foot of the cross, who offers her son with all her heart. And and St. Paul speaks about widows. He, he speaks about, well, if a widow is young and they, they, they could be remarrying, well, nothing is 
lawful against that. But he says, but if 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 some if a if a widow basically can can give her life to God and 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 she remains single, well, that's not to be frowned upon. In fact, she's being called to great prayer. And so, if you are a widow, um, try to see it in light of a vocation as well. I mean, yes, be open. God may call somebody else into your life to to be to for you to to espouse, and that is beautiful. But 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 being a widow is not something that happens by chance, and throughout whatever circumstances may have happened to have brought it about. But the fact is that it is actually I think it's a vocation, um, and 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 the Lord is looking for all of your heart. He's looking for you for to offer it in prayer, and the the suffering of missing that companion on earth is to be channeled towards finding the companionship in Christ in a unique way, and to be solaced by His deep love.